If someone thinks they want to get married as a Catholic Church understands marriage, mm -hmm. it's the priest's obligation to conduct an investigation. And canon law talks about his investigation's purpose is to determine whether they're doing anything there, whether they actually want Catholic marriage. Because if they don't, then it's a sham and they should be denied the option of having a, a big Catholic wedding in a Catholic church. Okay. Like, for example, look, there are some principles. Do they understand marriage is permanent? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes or no, that's English. Yes. So are you lying when you say you understand it's permanent? I've seen a diocese where they have the mother and father of the bride are given a questionnaire where they have to say, I understand that my daughter or son believes marriage is permanent, believes they're going to be sexual faithful, believes they're open to children, and they don't have any mental problems, making them incapable of understanding what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So there is a process. Um, a lot of parishes or dioceses are talking also about using that investigation process also for marriage preparation. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, let's give some people some basics about finances or conflict resolution and things like that, mm -hmm. which, is, which is fine. Mm -hmm. It's not critical to make marriage a marriage. Mm -hmm. So that, that's occurring. So when we, when we talk about crossing over into the constitutional understanding or this, the, the, the government laws understanding what marriage is, well, a lot of states say marriage is a contract. Okay, if it's a contract, well, what are the elements of a contract? It's an offer, mm -hmm. it's an understanding, it's an agreement. Well, the Catholic Church has this whole process where it's documented in a, right. in a parish file. Right. The priest has to sign off, the couples have to sign off sometimes, right. saying, we agree to all this. So this is proof in the parish file that the couple had this understanding of their contract. Mm -hmm. So where in the world does the state have the power to go turn all that upside down? That, that's that's kind of like religious liberties issue. Okay. But then in the case of a marriage crisis, so let's say this, this, this lady in New Jersey, her husband appears to care about being Catholic and he files for no-fault divorce and she gets this, this really disheartening outcome where she's kicked out of her marital home. So she used one of our petitions. Um, I'm trying to think how not to make this too complicated. I guess I'll talk about one kind. There's two okay. venues on which someone could petition. One is what is the bishop's venue and there's another venue, which is a judicial a tribunal venue. It's just a different different rules, but same principles overseeing mm -hmm. it. So anyways, she, she petitions in the bishop's venue, um, asking for the implementation of the Catholic Code of Canon Law, which is first and primary, try to get the couple to reconcile. If mm -hmm. reconciliation fails, then it's to define the status of the parties. Because all Catholics who are married are supposed to be living together, maintaining a common home for themselves and their children. And if they're not, that that's the wrong thing yeah. and it's giving scandal however we're not supposed to be having all these couples separated with no d defining of what's going on there okay we're not supposed to do that on our, our own authority kind of like as a catholic i can't go you and, I, you and i can't go to the catholic church and marry ourselves right it's like we can't do that that doesn't count right well once people are married they can't go and just separate themselves and say, well, we've got a legitimate reason to be separated, everything's fine, because it gives scandal to everybody else. So, or it could be destroying someone's good name, because like this lady in New Jersey, if they, people know her husband wanted the divorce, and with me too as a defendant, they knew my husband was the one that wanted a divorce and I didn't, and it's like, hmm, you know, what's wrong with Bay? Bay must be really dangerous, or Bay must be committing adultery, or Bay must have lost her mind, because if Bay's husband wants to be separated, well, if everybody's being good, then they must have done something really bad. So my good name's being dragged through the mud, right. which is unjust. So this is where the canon law and separation of spouses kicks in. So the woman asks for the implementation of that, and after the attempt of reconciliation might fail by the pastoralist leadership, then the next step is defining the status. And there's a principle, um, the grounds for separation include adultery. They include making um, marital common life unduly difficult, which means violence, danger, really wicked behavior. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not simple arguments. Right. But another one is malicious abandonment. So she asked the diocese to, to investigate the situation, and she alleged that her husband is maliciously abandoning her. And then we have another principle in the Catholic, code of, in, in Catholic understanding. When Catholics participate in Mass and get Holy Communion, we do not think it's a symbol. We think we're accepting Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity mm -hmm. in the communion. And it actually is us saying yes to Jesus. I want you in me. I want to, you know, be helping out. I'm on your team. I believe and agree with everything the Catholic Church holds true. Mm -hmm. If Catholics are in a state of serious <coughs> sin, 
it's it's a sacrilege to do that. I mean, I use the example, it's like kicking them in the teeth or knocking them in the ground. So as a follow-up, when this woman in Jersey petitions, if my husband is maliciously abandoning me, abandoning a marriage is a grave sin, so he should be instructed that you can't do this and call yourself a Catholic in good standing. And it's not because we hate the husband. Right. It's more like the 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 mom who's disheartened if their son is addicted to drugs. It's right. a loving thing to say you are on the wrong path. Yeah. And you're hurting the whole community and you're hurting your children. So then the husband would have to choose. Am I going to be a hypocritical Catholic mm -hmm. or am I actually sticking my nose in the air and saying to hell with all of it? But at least that would prevent the scandal. Mm -hmm. But that, then the other piece of it, which is where it ties into trying to protect... Um, protect everyone who enters a Catholic marriage against the no-fault divorce process is because you get married in the Catholic Church and we have our code of canon law and there's principles that are supposed to be used to determine obligations, then those principles should be used to determine obligations when the Catholic authorities implement and decide the obligations of the parties. So like in this case, the woman would never be kicked out of her home if her husband right. wants to abandon her. Right. And her husband, who happens to be very well-to-do, would still have to support them because that's what you agree going into marriage. One of Mary's advocates' goals is once the church and the diocese leadership start implementing our own Catholic Code of Canon Law and they start issuing these formal decrees and formal sentences where the outcome of the sentence would say, husband, we tried recon you reconciling and you refused. Your wife has done nothing that justifies separation. You are obligated still to maintain your share of the good of the spouses and supporting that household. That decree can have the weight of like an arbitrator's agreement, or an arbitrator's decision, or mm -hmm. um, or the principles used could be religious principles that both parties agreed to when they entered the marriage, mm -hmm. and then the civil government can't interfere because mm -hmm. we have this whole principle of religious liberties and religious freedoms, and when two people go into marriage, like what I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. the Catholic understanding of marriage, the husband wants to be with his kids, or the wife expects that we're both contributing to the marital household, that's part of what you went into with marriage, and it's integrally connected with religion. Right. And the state shouldn't be interfering with that. Yeah. So, so anyways, that's kind of a tangent, but it's part of what our goals are. Yeah. But for this woman, um, what the diocese did is, I can only guess that they haven't seen a petition like this, so they didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they were doing this 60 years ago in the United States, but, you know, things went crazy during the sexual revolution right. everywhere. So right. it is what it is. Um, she met with two diocesan staff personnel, one of whom was a canon lawyer, and they were cr kind of trying to talk her out of it, kind of like telling her to go away, and they were kind of telling her, well, you know, you're obviously hurt and angry, so we need to get your healing, but the healing becomes, you know, just pretend you're not married anymore or just get yeah. over it rather than we as church, as father, as pastor, as you know, the ones who are supposed to be executing yeah. these canon laws have obligations. <laughs> we yeah. don't want to do any of that. Yeah. So if someone gets nowhere with this one kind of petition, if they don't get any kind of answer within three months, then the window is open to appeal to another level of authority. And the way the Vatican is set up, there's these different offices in Rome that have competence over different areas. So there's an office run by Cardinal Seurat Congregation of Divine Worship and Discipline of the Sacraments. Mm -hmm. So um, she would appeal to his office next, and if she gets nothing after three months from that office, then a, a, a silence is considered a negative, mm -hmm. and she has the window open to appeal to the next office, which is mm -hmm. the Signatura. Mm -hmm. um, Cardinal Raymond Burke used to be in charge of the Signatura. He's kind of making news now because he's challenging a lot of crazy things that are going on in the Vatican. Mm -hmm. It's It's disheartening that... I can't say I've got dozens of people who have, you know, gotten what they asked for and their church right. told the abandoner you can't do what you're doing and then the abandoner had a change of heart or the abandoner yeah. just dug his heels in. I can't say that. But what I do see is it's never going to change unless people ask for it to be changed. Right. And if there are canon lawyers who were never taught this when they went to canon law school, yeah. um, then let's bring it to their attention.